All right, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update on this Saturday night, January 20th, 2024. It is about 10.37 p.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity still shows some movement up into the Alaska area where they seen that five-pointer here a day or so ago. Getting some aftershock activity, it looks like, within this region. Uh, still possibility of maybe something bigger uh, about ready to take place up here or outside the uh, Fairbanks area of Alaska. Uh, they did see uh, quite a bit of aftershock activity in this region following the uh, 5.3 that struck there um, yesterday. So keep an eye on that. Uh, looking at the bigger view here, latest quake shows a uh, 4.9 up here across the Kurokamachaka, somewhat deep there into the uh, subduction zone. And we did have three large earthquakes today. Uh, the first one started off here this morning into the northern Mariana Islands area uh, underneath this region into the subduction zone, uh, about 184 kilometers deep for a 6.1. I struck about 7 o'clock this morning. And then we started to see some other activity here this afternoon with a super deep 6.6. Uh, that one super deep into the subduction zone of the Peru Chile Trench. Down there at about 614 kilometers. That is a deep one. We'll continue to watch areas upstream here potentially for some further movement with, with uh, that activity that occurred earlier this afternoon. Uh, about an hour or so later, we did see another large earthquake out here in the southwest Indian Ridge. So that makes three six-pointers today. That's a, a decent uptick. So far, we're starting off the year 2024 with a, a lot of activity. Uh, so that one out here in the southwest Indian Ridge, 6.2, uh, defaulted level there into the divergent boundary, the uh, oceanic uh, divergent zone out here at 10 kilometers. Uh, looking at this area here across the west coast, still getting some movement up here in Seattle. Uh, just outside of Seattle, it looks like. A couple of smaller twos here throughout the last 24 hours, including one up here close Um well, just offshore of the uh, Vancouver Island range range here, uh, five kilometers for a 2.5, somewhat close here to the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, and a couple other, uh, there's a deeper quakes out here outside of Seattle. Uh, let me check the trimmer map up here and see what we have for trimmer. This is activity occurring down into the subduction level of the Cascadia. Nothing going on up here right now in Washington. It looks like the 75 epicenters today I uh, have been around the Oregon area into that um, a portion of the Cascadia subduction zone down there, about 45 kilometers or so. Um, not a whole lot of activity in terms of earthquake movement up here for now. The rest of the West Coast here, California, starting to light up slightly. Um, let's see here what we had for 2.5 and above. Looks like the latest one was the... Uh, uh, 3.1 and a 3.4, literally within a minute of each other earlier this morning off of the um, San Jacinto Fault Zone. Uh, as you can see, mostly microquake activity out here today. Um, some movement out in Nevada. Looks like a 3.3 outside of Lovelock, Nevada. Earlier this morning, about 5 o'clock or so. Nothing showing up here at Yellowstone. Uh, but let's just double check, see what we got going on here. And there's that, uh, goodness... We had three three uh, large earthquakes, right? The largest one's going to be that uh, super deep one in the area of uh, the Peru Chile Trench, and that showed up uh, fairly nicely here on the Yellowstone seismograph stations. Most stations around the world would definitely show that uh, signature. That just goes to show you how sensitive uh, the seismograph stations are in terms of picking up ground motion, ground movement, ground vibrations. Uh, there's the um, it's going to be the first quake there in the Mariana Trench earlier this morning. And then uh, there's the big, big one down there in, uh, underneath the uh, Brazil area. And then the, uh, there was another one about an hour later in the uh, southeast Indian, uh, southeast uh, ridge down here, southwest Indian ridge, excuse me. Uh, that one doesn't look like it showed up, though, on the Yellowstone Station. Uh, but far as earthquake activity goes, um, not a whole lot going on out here. Some very small microquakes in the last 24 hours. Uh, but aside from that, i uh, really not seen anything of abnormal um, movement 
I believe there was some wind events out here as well. That's kind of what it looks like showed up here across uh, some of the seismograph stations for a couple hours earlier this afternoon. Uh, aside from that, uh, see what else we got here across the states. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, typical regions getting their earthquake activity here in Oklahoma. Velma, Oklahoma. Uh, looks like some activity out around these oil fields here. Of, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's oil fields out here. Let me see. Satellite imagery. I can, well, I can see a, some of them. Uh, some are going to appear in these little checkered boxes here with a few tanks on them. But, uh, yeah, they're out there. Definitely uh, got a few of those out there in that area of Oklahoma. Uh, aside from that, not a whole lot going on across the eastern portion of the country. A couple earthquakes down into the Puerto Rico region. The largest one shows a 4.1 here. Uh, just outside the Dominican Republic, fairly deep, 169 kilometers deep to be exact. So a little bit of deeper movement going on here globally um, in the last 24 hours. So keep an eye on things. Normally deep activity means that uh, we could be seeing some bigger quakes out here at the surface levels. Uh, there's some deeper movement here out into the Tonga region. That one coming in uh, this earlier this evening. Doesn't look like anything else downstream, down around New Zealand area. Uh, well, looks like some newer quakes there reporting off the South Island area, 3.9 and a 3.3. Uh, but aside from that, doesn't look like anything major. I'm going to drop that real quick, the time a little bit, because that quake was uh, an older quake. Should have been off the chart, off the globe. Uh, let's see, Hawaii, anything else going on up here? Looks like Kilauea Volcano showing a little bit of activity confined here to the Lava Lake area right underneath it. Looks like a couple two stirring up there. Uh, so let's double check and see what's going on there. Hazard notification system. I just want to give a quick glance. They did put out an update this morning um, stating that the volcano is currently not erupting and it's the same deal in terms of their statements. Uh, we could see uh, an eruption at any time. Uh, of course, I think that would... Uh, follow a period of increased earthquake activity and a lot more than what we're seeing right now. Uh, the activity we're seeing right now is generally light. Uh, tilt meter station still going up, up and up and up. Um, and goodness, we're <laughs> that is way up there compared to even the previous event here. Uh, so we're looking at this um, inflation level at its highest uh, level since 2018, since the 2018 eruption there at Kilauea Volcano. Uh, so something's going to happen here soon. The, just, the question is, uh, on, on everyone's mind, is how much longer can uh, the area below remain pressurized here and continue to, uh, you know, accumulate that uh, magma level? Uh, earthquake activity, there's some of it uh, in the last 24 hours, or past 12 hours, excuse me. Uh, some of that this morning and then a little bit here it looks like throughout the uh, afternoon and evening but uh, aside from that generally small earthquake activity there confined to the lava lake area of Kilauea volcano um, there's that one earthquake up here in the Kuro Kamachaka been watching this for a while 4.9 67 kilometers deep got to keep an eye on this area right here it's a major subduction zone it's been a long time since we've seen any uh, large scale activity. Of course, they do see some fives and sixes on occasion, but we're talking about anything, uh, we're talking about stuff that's above the seven range, eight range, um, you know, on, on that type of uh, magnitude. So just keep an eye on the Kuro Kamachaka. A lot of uh, deep movement going on here across the globe. Looks like things are starting to uh, maybe get set up here for some, uh, some larger quake activity. Uh, let's check out, uh, let's see here, see what we've got since the, uh, 6.6 .6 this morning, or I mean this afternoon, uh, most of the activity, goodness, still some deep activity going on here in the South America region. Look at that 5.4, 206 kilometers deep here. Uh, and then another one, 4.5, 168 kilometers deep. So watch this area. We're getting some broad, deep activity all across the subduction zone. Uh, that's got to be a sign here. Maybe something about ready to uh, hit this area uh, up around the strained regions. Talking about further upstream here uh, where we see a lot of the larger uh, earthquakes take place. But that uh, that was a good deep earthquake today. 
one of the deepest ones I've seen in a long time in this area. Uh, let's see what we got for seismograph stations here. Fairly quiet, not a whole lot going on currently as we speak. Uh, space weather activity from the solarham.net site. Well, <clears throat> see what we got. A little bit of sea flare activity going on here across uh, the sunspot. And that's, I think that's the one I said to keep an eye on of any of them. It's going to be 3559 as um, far as that sunspot activity right now. Looks, uh, you know, looks a little complex. Not super complex there, but uh, again, like I said earlier, this is probably about the only region of interest in terms of um, some flaring. And obviously we've seen it uh, since that update this morning, a couple sea flares taking place. Uh, overall threat right now, 95% chance for a sea flare. M flare at 35, X flare around 5% chance or so. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, it looks like we do have some type of solar storm coming up here on the 22nd and 23rd. So this is going to be UTC time, 1824. Um, so technically that's going to be, uh, I believe that's going to be tomorrow night. Yeah, that should be tomorrow night. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Maybe G1 uh, up to G1 storm conditions here. I'm not really expecting too much. I mean, we, I'm not even for sure what all that, uh, what, where this is coming from here. I know we've had a little bit of CME activity. Uh, let's see what they're stating here. Uh, there was a faint partial halo coronal mass ejection that is now visible in the latest, uh, coronagraph imagery based on the location of the event. It may have a partial earth directed component. So may have, may is the key word. So if nothing happens tomorrow, then uh, obviously it missed us, but uh, we'll keep an eye on the sky if you have clear skies uh, tomorrow night. And uh, looks like maybe on Monday night as well. All right, uh, Storm Prediction Center here. Not a whole lot of severe weather threats over the next couple days. Fairly quiet to say the least. Uh, we're dealing with some rain right now. Unfortunately, here where I'm at, I'm in a rain shadow. It's been raining mostly, uh, seems like it's about Yuba City southward into Sacramento in the east side of the valley. We've been skipping Chico area and just west of Chico here. We've been in that little rain shadow. You can see it there on the map. A bummer. Um, so hopefully this fills in. And uh, the rain shadow is due to the coast range here uh, when these storm systems come in from the west uh, from west to east like that, it, it, uh, well, it drains the, uh, the storms here, the precipitation out over the mountains and then the valley kind of skips it. And then it forms back again over the Sierra Nevada, uh, Sierra Nevada mountains there. Uh, so hopefully that will change as we head in tomorrow. We do have a little bit more wetter system. Um, but then again, if you look really closely, it shows some really light green there. That's lower precipitation rates compared to the mountain range. So goodness. Hopefully that, uh, I don't know. I don't like that flow right now from west to east, but uh, I guess I'll have to, I'll have to accept it, right? Uh, hopefully we'll get some rain tomorrow. And that's going to be the case there. It looks like for, uh, for a little while, as we head into February and whatnot, things look to be wet again out here across the west coast. And that's good news because we need it. And that could spell some trouble out there across, uh, other areas of the country here, maybe some severe potential with that colder air coming in as we head into February. We'll definitely keep an eye on it, uh, but for now, at least we're getting some storm systems out here uh, and snow at the extreme higher levels above 7,000 feet or so. Uh, these systems coming out um, from the Pacific are somewhat uh, warm, uh, so not a lot of cold air there. <clears throat> All right, folks, I'm going to jump, jump off here and... Uh, <coughs> Hmm, goodness, perfect timing, right? Uh, tomorrow's Sunday. Got a uh, pretty busy week ahead of me. I'm starting uh, starting back a spring class. Spring classes are already here at the college where I go to here in Northern California. So i um, going to be busy once again. It doesn't seem like uh, I had much of a break here, but... Uh, that's all right. I like to stay busy. I like to keep my mind occupied and focused. Uh, so the best way to do that is to fill my mind up with further information, right? You can never have too much information, education that is. Uh, so I look forward to the classes here I'm going to take. 
All right, guys, uh, just keep an eye on things out here. A lot of deep movement, and uh, there's always that potential of seeing some larger activity here around these regions that seen that deeper activity. I'm talking about upstream areas. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here uh, sometime tomorrow. Take care, folks. Enjoy your Saturday night.